Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sunny in Phoenix podcast. I'm Charlie Erling. I have Mitch Krumpetich and David McGraw with me. Still down at Summer League. And after a disappointing 102-98 loss to the Grizzlies yesterday, we're here to talk a little about the game and get you set up for the one we're about to go to. So, I guess we just uh, hit those social media plugs, boy. What? <laughs> Make sure to get a hold of us on social media. Our Twitter is at Sunny and PHX Pod. Our email is Sunny and PHX Pod at gmail.com. And check us out over at our new host, the Deepish Thoughts Podcast Network, over at deepishthoughts.com. Thanks for listening to the Sunny and Phoenix Podcast. If you'd like to further support the show, you can head over to tpublic.com slash user slash sunny in PHX. That's T-E-E public dot com slash user slash sunny in PHX. We've got t-shirts, mugs, phone cases, all kinds of stuff. You can get our famous cheese is warming up design or just one that says sunny in PHX. Again, tpublic.com slash user slash sunny in PHX. And go Suns! So, first off, I think we have to start off with the bad news. Marquise Chris went down with a sprained or tweaked ankle. We have not seen the news on what the injury actually is, but he only got eight minutes in that game. So, let's talk a little bit about, is it worth playing our stars? The guys that we, a guy that we saw start almost every game last year, do you think it was worth playing him still in the summer league? What do you guys think? I mean, I think it was worth it. He did a lot of good things. He really helped the team out, and he's still growing a lot. This is a great opportunity for Marquise to grow, and, you know, we've talked about how he's put all this weight on, and that's great, but he's got to learn how to use that. So I think this was a good opportunity, and the Suns' official Twitter said it was a left ankle sprain, but it sounds like he's going to be evaluated a little further in the coming days. So hopefully it's nothing serious, but, I mean, the way he came down on it didn't look very good. Yeah, I think this is a thing that just a lot of teams go through that question of, do we play our guys that they need the minutes because we need to see how they're progressing, know that they're know their trajectory, but these kind of things can happen. I mean, we kind of all joked and laughed when Lonzo was sat out with a hamstring strain or when Ingram stopped playing the entire summer league because of cramps, but the reason why is so that nothing too big happens and a sprain not that big of a deal you know you walk gingerly a little bit it hurts and you don't want to play on that so you don't hurt it anymore so i it's not too big of a deal i don't think i think chris is going to be fine they're going to probably reevaluate him and i'm assuming that it's not that big of a deal he needed some help walking but i think it was a little more precautionary because he was putting a bit of weight on it while we watched him walk off so I think Chris is going to be fine. The problem with our team is is that Chris and Bender needed those minutes. They are projects. We could see Booker come in in his second summer league and see that, yeah, he's polished. He knows what he's doing. We're, we're good. We can sit him. If there's one other person on this Suns summer league team that I feel like we know is good and we know we can rest him because... You know, he is growing, but is super polished. That's Josh Jackson. And saying that about our rookie player is a pretty big deal. Absolutely. And while we're on the topic of Josh Jackson, he had 13 points, 8 boards, 1 assist, and 2 steals. And just another game doing a little bit of everything. Love seeing those rebound numbers so high out of a guy playing small forward for us, for one. just That's still beautiful. And... I saw the nickname Dr. JJ on the Sun subreddit the other day, and I think I'm falling in love with that. Yeah. I love the throwback nickname. I love the throwback game, kind of. We talk about TJ having a throwback game, but, man, Josh Jackson, he's he makes me really excited. And the fact that he was getting those rebounds where once Chris went out, he was basically slotted in at the four and playing against guys that were a bit bigger than him, it's it's the real deal. If he would have been probably playing in position, he probably would have had a few more. Yeah, and I just love his aggressiveness going up to get those rebounds. And he mentioned in a post-game interview that the team was tired. And, I mean, they've played 
couple days in a row now. Summer league is a pretty tiring time. It's hot, all of that. Um, but he's still going hard for every rebound, fighting in traffic, and coming down with the ball. Eight rebounds is great, especially when he's facing these bigger guys like David just said. So I'm really happy with that and just his attitude overall. He's going hard on every play. Yeah, something I noticed was a great pass. I'm going to forget the guy's name. It was number 20 on our team, the guy that had all those blocks the other night. Obekpa? Yeah, Obekpa. Yeah, Chris Obekpa. Obekpa. Obekpa or there we go. Obekpa. Uh, Jackson hooked him up with a beautiful sort of a pocket pass underneath the rim. He wrapped it like towards the, across the baseline to him, and it just bounced straight off of his hands and went out of bounds. Jackson got a little fired up about that and let him know he should have brought that in. That was an easy dunk for him. And we've heard about Jackson's attitude problems. We've we've seen that. But in a case like this, if you if you need to get on a guy a little bit, I like seeing that leadership personally. He didn't overdo it. He didn't make the guy look bad. But some guys need to be told when they mess up, and maybe that fixed him up for the rest of the game. So just that leadership this early in summer league has been great to see. Yeah, and we've talked about that – fire that competitive competitiveness that drive that jackson has and it's been apparent in these summer league games the oh, yeah. dude wants to give it his all and i cannot be happier about that right well and speaking of great passing dragon bender had some really really nice passes 20 points seven rebounds five assists he's seeing the court a lot better than he did last year in again a small sample size but you can tell that that vision is already improved. And I really liked what I saw from Bender. He, he's just so much more comfortable. I know we've talked about this a lot, but every single game it appears he's really settling in. So I'm super excited for the regular season because if he's settling in now in Summer League, just wait until he's got a couple more months of running with this team. Yeah, and I mean, defensively, he's going to be able to run with some guys that are a little bit smarter and aren't going to try and strip the ball from a guy going up for a shot and getting a foul when Bender is in position to play great defensively. So I think I think Bender's going to appreciate that a little bit more too. And you know, the internet is the place for overreactions. The internet's the place for that. <laughs> Summer League plus the internet, that's getting pretty salty with those overreactions. And we've seen so many things about Bender's a bust. Why did we draft him so early? It's going to be years before he's ready. And then he plays a game like this yesterday, and everybody's a pretty big fan again all of a sudden. So <laughs> maybe we should just temper those expectations a bit, know that he's going to be a good player. Maybe he won't be having a ton of input numbers-wise this season again. I mean, we'll have to see, but the guy's going to be good. So well, let's all just take a little bit of a chill pill on that, huh? <laughs> That's right. I mean, Mitch, he was so far off the bandwagon that after that game he actually went out and purchased a dragon bender jersey so he's well, wearing it right now i am wearing a dragon bender jersey but i bought it this is a life hack for everyone now that uh the nba is going to nike jerseys check out uh the sun's website or if you're a fan of another team just go to your team's website I got this jersey for like 40 bucks because it's on sale. It's the old Adidas one. And I like Dragan Bender. You know, I mean, if you've listened to this show, you know how I feel about Croatian, Yugoslavian players in general. Love I like them a boy. lot. So <laughs> <laughs> That's right, boy. So, uh, yeah, I went out and got the Bender jersey. And, yeah, check out all these sales. They're pretty awesome. Yeah, and we would like to let you know that this episode of the Sunny and Phoenix podcast is brought to you by... Never mind. Um, <laughs> Actually, tpublic.com slash hey. user slash Sunny and PHX. Um, those shirts go on sale quite a bit, too. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I like that. Uh, that was great. Uh, kind of what we mentioned about the guys being tired, though. Bender looked gassed. He was he having did. to play a little he bit did. more with Chris Hurt, and really as our only guy that was big that Obeka guy or Obekpa not the biggest he's a little bit taller than Josh Jackson and Bender was our biggest guy and he was getting matched up against the center he's playing a little bit more he was gassed but he's still going out there and giving it his all and trying to do it and even with this three-point shot not following he was getting guys to run up right on him and then he's going past him and getting a good high percentage shot so you gotta love that that basketball IQ is just off the charts oh yeah 
So, one thing that we've been doing to fight being gassed, I think, is when we moved Shaquille Harrison into the starting lineup two games ago now, he has been playing great defense from the point. He had an all-around really nice game, 16 points. And, I mean, when we're starting Mike James and Shaquille Harrison, that is a small back court but here in the summer league you can you can definitely get away with that I just still enjoying the energy he is bringing I've said this last episode too but if he keeps it up maybe we'll see him on a G League roster this year or something that's right well and then we got to talk about Mike James we do we unfortunately do have to talk about Mike James yeah so 32 points five rebounds somehow he had five assists when I wrote that stat down, I was like, that's got to be a typo. Maybe they mean two, but it's five. Um, six total turnovers is the key in that one, too, including the game-losing turnover. When, when we had the chance to take the lead, he decided to throw the ball out of bounds instead of to Josh Jackson, who was cutting to the rim. But whatever. It's like, I said this while we were watching the game. I said, I know he has 32 points, but he has had a terrible game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can get buckets and still not have a good game, especially when you see your point guard doing that and kind of abandoning the point guard role to get guys involved. I don't know. That five assists is surprising to me. I don't think I saw five of them. But I don't know. Mike James, there's good things about him. There's bad things about him. But, man, was that a disappointing way to end the game. I mean, should he have gotten the last shot after he hit that three? the possession before yeah i i think i probably would have let him do it again but man that's the definition of an airhead decision when you dribble out six seconds of the clock there's two left and then you try to drop one off to a guy that has nothing to do with the play pretty much that oh that was just tough to see well i mean it's kind of apparent and it kind of frustrates me a little bit more because jackson was coming over for a screen So that way we could get an easier chance at a bucket. And Mike James waved everyone off. And then he turns around, dribbles, tries to do a crossover, and then throws it out of bounds, and then wants to give Jackson a little bit of garbage for not being in the spot. It's like, you can't get mad at someone for that. And you can't get mad at the dude that's been playing better than you, even if he doesn't have as many points because you're jacking up all the shots you want. Like, come on, man. You can't do that. And James is in midair like he's taking a shot and Jackson I mean Jackson's doing the right thing crashing to the glass because Mike James has been shooting all night long and then he decides in midair I'm gonna pass this time yeah With, <laughs> like as soon as we threw the ball into him he looked hesitant right from the start it, it didn't look like he was trying to get his dribble going it, it just didn't look right and then when he jumped to either take the shot or drop off the pass, which he dropped off the pass, it it didn't look like either option would be good as soon as it happened. So, I mean, that's a tough way to go out and a tough way to get eliminated from the Summer League tournament here. Yeah, can we just give Shaquille Harrison Mike James' contract and just have Mike James go back overseas? (sighs) I know it. Can Shaquille Harrison dunk like Mike James? No. That's all I got. But he can draw fouls better than him. (laughs) That's probably true. (laughs) Yeah. So... Uh, I guess one note for the Grizzlies, Wayne Selden, excellent game. He ended up with 33 points, four boards, two assists. I think he had 17 or 18 in the first half, and he couldn't miss. He was on he fire. Was it was nice to see we climbed back and got the lead back in the game when Selden cooled down. But towards the end there, he was pretty clutch, and he was the one that sealed the game for him. So. Shout out to him, I suppose. Like, if we have some Grizzlies listeners, we can't just... Uh... Well, and I think there's an important Suns note here. And that's, I mean, Chuck, you mentioned earlier that we have a small backcourt with Harrison and James. And Wayne Selden is a big physical guard who yep. gets to the rim. And, I mean, they just didn't stand a chance against him. I mean, Wayne Selden really has to show off why he deserves to be on a G League roster every <laughs> year. So it, it makes sense. He's got that pro body, though. He does. He's got the pro body. He does. Well, anything else before we head to this next game, fellas? I continue to love Davon Reed. Oh, yeah. He yeah, didn't yeah. have a super standout, like, crazy stat line, but, you know, he had 13 points. He 
made some good moves. Didn't knock down everything, but it just doesn't matter. I, I love watching him play, and I'm really, really excited to see some interesting lineups with maybe a Bledsoe, Booker, Reed, like, wing and, like, point, or a Euless Bled, Reed, or a Euless Booker, Reed, or any of those kind of things, and just experiment a little bit, because I really like that dude. He's doing the right things. When his shot's not falling, he still just makes really good decisions. He plays so hard on defense, too. Yep. He's just a pleasure to watch. Yeah. I know I was surprised when we took him with that 32 pick. I think Draft Express had him late 50s or 60s. Right. No one really talked about him, but he was one of those guys that came in for two workouts, so there was something that stuck out, and I think we're seeing a bit of that here in Summer League now. Yeah, yeah. that wingspan is just ridiculous, though. Like, uh, <laughs> I have probably a little bit more confidence in him just because that wingspan is redonk. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Redone. <laughs> we we got to quit right there. Guys. That's yeah. done. We got to quit right there. We peaked. Yeah. We peaked. We'll be back tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next time and go Suns. Bye.